Hey everybody, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and today I'm bringing you my review of the Technofiber T-Fi XTC 305. So first of all, a disclaimer or a warning, I have no connection with any racket manufacturers, uh, but this Technofiber XTC 305 is my racket of choice. So this review is gonna be a little bit biased. Um, I love it and it's probably gonna feel like a bit more of a number of reasons as to why I like it and think it's so good. So Technofiber, Quite a fan of Technofiber. I think they make um, a really good racket across the T-Fight line. Uh, the 300 version, which I'm not reviewing today, I actually think it's a really good racket for maybe your advancing juniors, sort of older end teenagers. Also think it's a good option for intermediate to advanced players. I think they make some great bags. And I think a lot of what they do is kind of quite clever with their racket. So bit of a fan. Also, they're getting a little bit more uh, exposure now with, of course, Medvedev. Uh, they've always had Jeremy Chardy and uh, the Brit. Um, Joe Salisbury is playing some really good doubles with the brand. So this line of the T-Fights has XTC, Extreme Touch Construction, uh, designed to give good stability and feel. Certainly I think that is two characteristics of the racket. And if we have a look at the sort of readily available claimed stock specs, you have a 98 square inch head, 33.4 balance point, 65 RA stiffness rating with a pretty healthy 329 swing weight. Uh, the interesting bit is that string pattern of 18 by 19. So how does it play and why do I love it so much? Well, kind of court time and review shortly. First of all, I wanted to raise a couple of pretty neat features with you. First of all, check out this armor cap. Hope you can see that. Now, Technofiber claim that that gives an extra 40% of protection to the racket. And, and I'd agree, this is the one I use the most and uh, it takes quite a lot of damage and all of the frame has been really protected. But the big thing for me is that that gives you this extra kind of sense of security on court. So if you're diving for a ball, it never crosses your mind that you might damage your racket. A lot of people will probably care about that. So I think it makes a fundamental difference. It reduces that likelihood that you might hold back worried about your racket. Second of all, the grips. So this has an overgrip, um, it's black underneath, but it's a really unique grip. It is quite spongy, but the sponge sort of effect seems to last for a few millimeters and then you do get a really good grip on the handle. And I feel that that leads to great feel, but also that little bit of kind of foaminess within it really gives me a little bit of extra skin comfort. And as someone who hits with a lot of rackets, hits a lot of balls all week and also works in fitness, my hands are under great pressure all the time, moving weights around for people, lifting weights all the time. And I find that a lot of tennis rackets will often then cause my skin on my hand to have problems. Not the case with this. Third of all, don't know whether you can see this, but I'll try and show you some of the grommets. Again, just really clever, kind of thought about. Those grommets have been put in place to assist stringers in their tie-off process. Now, I'm stringing myself more now as I'm doing more reviews. I used to make the sort of time versus economy decision of getting good stringers that I know to string for me, but I'm doing more stringing myself now, and that, I can tell you, is a really good feature. It's really helpful, and I can quite imagine that if you are taking your game seriously, or maybe stringing for yourself, playing competitively, or you're stringing a lot, that could have a big impact on the stringing time coming down. Well, does it play on court? Well, I guess first point to make is it's really nice for me this last week to go back to my racket. I obviously play with it a lot, it's familiar, so no need for me to take it on the wall for initial thoughts. But my initial baseline hits with it in terms of this review just reminded me why I really like it. I mean, ultimately you have still quite a maneuverable racket, but you have a racket that is loaded with great plow through with that swing weight, very, very stable and good control. But here for me is the two really clever bits again. So first of all, that string pattern, we have 
18 in the mains, 19 in the crosses. Now what I've been finding, I guess, through this process of reviewing rackets is that I think the crosses can have a big impact on your level of spin. So hitting with the uh, Wilson Blade 98S, that has that interesting string pattern in the crosses. And I think that's one element why you get this enormous spin. Also the Wilson Steam S range from years ago also played around with those crosses string numbers. So the fact that this has that 19 string pattern in the crosses, for me, it gives same spin that you would get from a 1619. But the mains in a racket will arguably do most of the work and will be integral in terms of characteristics. And in this racket, we have 18 in our mains. So quite similar for me to a lot of 1820 rackets with regards to control point, which is for me quite a good thing. Uh, I also note that people like Djokovic are actually using this quite interesting string pattern, this 1819 string pattern, uh, as was um, Agassi, one of my heroes. So I think this string pattern is really, really good. It delivers you lots of control, but it also enables you to kind of play from the baseline how you want to. So I played some casual doubles last night, and just for fun, I was trying to play with as much spin as possible, and I could get loads with this. At other times, I just wanted to play kind of casually and just hit deep, and I was hitting out with loads of control. Brilliant, kind of best of both worlds. The other thing I really like is that you almost get a feeling with this, I think because of the balance point and the swing weight, that you're playing with something that is slightly bigger in terms of head size. So this is quite a sort of hard thing to describe, but I genuinely feel that with this racket, I can stand a foot closer than I would with other rackets, and I can take the ball on the rise with much, much more confidence and much more accuracy. I can almost do it in hits just for fun. I can just reduce my swing, take everything on the rise, kind of almost half volleys, and because of that sort of swing weight, you can just punch it back right deep into the court. And of course, this transfers really well to those kind of defensive situations where you're picking up the ball and you're under pressure. It's really, really good on defense. At net, again, we have something that is much more stable in my view than its base weight, and that probably is down to the weight distribution within the racket. So we have a really stable racket loaded with some good swing weight. So generally at the net, I always get this feeling that if I get something on it, it's gonna go back to the other side. But also the racket does have good control with that 18 in the mains for me, so I can play really well with this racket at the net. And on serve, it has that kind of perfect combination for me of being kind of thin beam enough to get through the air quite quickly and then heavy enough with enough swing weight and mass for me to get really good pace. I can feel that I can serve quickly and hit big first serves with this racket. And then also that string pattern, the 19 in the crosses, I do feel I can get a good kick on my second serve. So I always feel confident when I'm serving with this racket. Are there any downsides? Well, there's only one shot that I never feel totally confident with with this racket. So if I'm looking to play a kind of cute drop shot at the net, then I find the racket to be great. Again, you kind of just feel that you take everything off, let the ball just kind of react to the racket, and then you know that you've got a nice little response and a good drop shot. However, I can never totally nail uh, drop shotting from the net with this racket. And I have noticed that I can drop shot better from the baseline or from kind of mid court with more control orientated rackets. Now that's, I suppose, in the scheme of things is the one shot in the game that I don't feel I can nail with the racket and it just stands out with all of the other shots. So for me, it's not a reason to look to switch away from it. And I guess my word of warning would be that I don't think there necessarily is a kind of perfect racket that is gonna do everything exceptionally well and perfectly. And I think anybody can adapt to any racket, arguably. But this racket is just a great fit for me and how I want to play. I like to sit at the baseline. 
I like to increasingly take opportunities to then kind of counter punch and attack quickly. I do come into the net more now than I was a couple of years ago, so this is good at net. And I feel as not being the biggest guy around that a little bit of help on my serve and easy depth is really important whilst also retaining good control. So if you're looking for all of those characteristics, then this racket is absolutely your ticket. I do think that some elements will be kind of a bit marmite so that grip that i mentioned you know it is quite soft and that won't be for everybody i mean for me i can get a lot of feel and it's a kind of odd sensation but it's so spongy but you can after the sponge really get a good grip on the racket and you really get a lot of feedback almost similar to a leather grip underneath a load of sponge so it's it's odd it is um, unique but certainly it works for me i know it work doesn't work for some others but i have to say i give this racket a lot of good pr around people that i hit with and a really good player that i hit with who was a pure strike user i encouraged him to have a couple of hits with this racket he switched immediately. I also uh, have another hitting partner who was playing with the Countervail 98 Blade 1619. I encouraged him to have a hit with this and he switched immediately too. And I think that was quite interesting, quite strategic that I asked them to do that. I think that the racket is a kind of more comfortable pure strike, but with a little bit more control. And then I think it's also in some respects similar to a blade, but then with a little bit more pop, easy power and depth. And that's probably the best way that I can summarize it. But I think the sort of genius elements are it's got nice touch, that construction is good and that string pattern just makes it fantastic. And a final note, I guess, on manufacturer quality. So I've heard some stuff around, um, I guess, quality control not being necessarily great. I think I've probably lucked out. So the specs of my rackets are a bit different to what you would find online. Here's my specs with overgrip, dampener, um, and I have three of the rackets. Now granted, they've got different strings at the moment in them, and they do have a little bit of different sort of plastic tape around the grip. So there's gonna be subtle differences in that overall weight. But I think when you combine these three, it goes to show that if there is quality control issues, then I've lucked out and I've got three that are uh, pretty close. And the other reason that I like these rackets is that I don't need to customize them. Uh, the weight, the swing weight, everything just works really well for me. I think you have a racket that is exceptionally stable with loads of swing weight for its weight in this racket. Hope you enjoyed this review. I'm aware that it was possibly not the most balanced of my videos. I mean, it was more a case of this is why I think it's great. Uh, but nevertheless, I hope it gave you a good insight to a racket that I think is really clever and has a lot to offer. Got some interesting ones coming up for you. The logical place to look after this is the Technofiber 305 TF40, and I will be reviewing that in a couple of weeks' time. Also going to be having a look at the uh, Graphene 360 Plus Head Spreed Pro, and I'm also really excited to be reviewing the Gravity Pro uh, at the moment. So all of those will come for you soon. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see those videos, and please give the video a thumbs up as that really helps me. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you soon.